Hi, welcome to the National Grid's Choice uh, Online News, and we have Peter Lorangis uh, with me right now. And Peter, please tell us uh, what advice could you give you know, for aspiring authors, especially uh, young people who, who are coming up from you know from universities or colleges and trying to find direction in life. Yeah, if you if you feel that you need to be a writer, if you feel that there's a talent inside of you, it's going to be very very hard because nobody owes you that kind of a living. So the energy that you have to expend is about two or three times the energy that anyone else has to expend because you're basically trying to do several different things. You've got to make a living, right? And you're not necessarily going to do it right away doing the thing that you love the most, which might be writing, it might be music, it might be any of a number of things. That doesn't mean you can't do it. If you feel that you're called, in a sense, to be a creative person, then you must, you must do it. And those of us who who feel that know, know what that means. We know that we, we can't not do it. Now, that doesn't mean that you've got to starve. I mean, when I first uh, started writing, I was, uh, you know, I was uh, examining many other different pathways. I thought I was going to go to law school. I actually applied to law school, and I got into law school, and I deferred for a year. A year turned into 25 years. But at the beginning, I had a fallback. I had something that I could go back to if I tried being a writer, if I tried being an actor, which was the two things that I did do, and I failed, I could have gone back to something else. It's, just, it's, it's really important to try to get yourself educated in as many subjects as possible and try to explore as many pathways as possible. That's your, that's your obligation when you want to make a living. I mean, you, don't, you can do it another way, but that's the way that I recommend. Yes, and folks, please take note that the uh, Peter's book is now available in all leading bookstores at Amazon, and also here in Asia, MBH is carrying his books. Right. Now, Peter, uh, one last thing is, what advice uh, would you give uh, pertaining to your next book? Uh, wow. Now that the first book is, is out, yeah. and uh, what, uh, could you give us some insights on yeah. that? Well, the Seven Wonder series is about four children who, are, uh, who find themselves on a desert island. They don't know why they're there, and it turns out that they have inherited a, con a characteristic from the royal family of the ancient civilization of Atlantis. And this gene that they have basically takes whatever they're good at, whether it's uh, music or sports, and turns it into a superpower. But nobody who's ever had the gene has lived past the age of 14, and they're all 13 years old. And on this island, they found a cure. And in order to be cured, they need to find seven objects that were taken centuries ago from the ancient civilization of Atlantis and hidden in each of the seven wonders of the ancient world. That's what connects the seven wonders. Of course, the problem is six of those seven wonders no longer exist in today's world. So these kids have to find them. In book one, they go searching for the uh, Colossus of Rhodes. And um, I won't tell you what happens because I don't want to spoil anything. But I've just finished writing book two, and uh, book two is called Lost in Babylon. So if you know anything about the seven wonders of the ancient world, you have an idea of what, of what wonder is, uh, is, is the focus of book two. Each book in the seven book series is going to, be, is going to involve one of those seven wonders. Having written up over 165 books today, you know, uh, do you have any, any regrets uh, being an author and not having been a great lawyer or any other profession? Would you ever trade uh, off any of these? No, no, I have no regrets whatsoever. I think if I had, not that there's anything wrong with being a lawyer or a doctor. I mean, I was a biochemistry major in college, so not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that it wasn't right for me for me personally, and had I tried doing that, I don't think I would be a very happy man right now. Um, I, I did, you know, I did uh, work very hard to try to find the thing that I was best suited for, so I'm happy. And so what's the philosophy of a good book, a good writing? Well, I think good writing is, is true writing. It's writing that comes from your soul. Your, you populate your characters with different aspects of your personality, and that makes your characters come to life. And it's absolutely uh, essential that the characters be real and be interesting to you. If they're interesting to you, they're interesting to other people, and your characters will make your plot come to life. You can lay a beautiful plot 
uh, out from beginning to end. But unless the characters in that plot are real and exciting, then the plot will, will be flat. So you, you've got to do that. Can our viewers uh, locate you uh, on your website for more information? Mm -hmm. My website is just my name, peterlerangis.com. Uh, P-E-T-E-R-L-E-R-A-N-G-I-S dot well, com. Once again, thank you for joining us, Peter. And folks, please uh, do look out for his book, uh, The Seven Wonders, now available around the world on Amazon.com as well as MPH uh, in Singapore and Southeast Asia. Once again, thank you for joining me. I'm Robin Steinberg here at The National Queen's Choice. Thank you.